Hello everyone, Dr. Kevin Zeta with you with Warrior Note School of Ministry and I got some crazy friends here that are going to answer your questions. We have a whole bunch of questions we're going to go over and this is Anna Warner. Thank you Anna for coming. This is exciting. Anna is, is, is a, a woman of God that lives in, I believe, Kansas City, right? Okay, last time I checked anyway. And I saw her on Sid Roth and we became friends. Uh, within the last year and then we've got Tony Kemp here who is another crazy friend of mine I've seen him on Sid Roth and ended up um, uh, ministering with you as well and and so we want to answer some of your questions that have come in and just remember that Warrior Notes School of Ministry is all about you it's all about discipleship it's all about Jesus replicating himself in to you so mm -hmm. I I essentially have come back and the Lord told me to do this school and it wasn't my idea and the Lord has really blessed it, but it's about you. Essentially, my goal is to work myself out of a job. So eventually, you all are going to do this. I'm going to stay home and throw rocks at the alligators in my backyard. Okay, so we're going to start with these questions because the, the, the more questions I answer, the faster you guys can do this for us, and then I can stay home and, and, and rest a little bit. Um, Jesse DePlanis, by the way, he told me, he said, don't worry about resting because you can rest when you get to heaven. And then uh, about three hours later, he called me and his wife made him call me and apologize and say, that's not true. You need to rest. So, <laughs> so, so anyway, um, I want to get started. Um, I want to ask Anna about fasting because uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of students, they want to get ready for whatever ministry that God's called them to. And, you know, there's all these things about fasting. And, and, and it's amazing how... When I was first a Christian, I used to just fast because that was what they did in the Bible times, and that's what Jesus talked about. Okay, but I've noticed over the last 20, um, you know, well, 40 years I've been walking with God that in the last 20, it's become very complicated, and now there's all these opinions about everything. And so I find out, I didn't even know this, that people don't even uh, believe in certain things anymore that they used to, you know, and I'm thinking, well, well you know, it works for me. So, like, what what is it? What is it about fasting? And, yeah. You know, you just uh, tell the students, and you you know, just talk to us about that. Yeah, I mean, I think when I first fasted, or you know, I had a misunderstanding as well. I thought, you know, I was doing it out of religion, really. And, okay, and, so there is a way to do it wrong. Though. You know, I think there is a way to do okay. it wrong. I, I was under like, okay, I've got to do this every month or every other month and, and it wasn't really about relationship with the Lord it was out of doing the methodology to get something and I think that's a little bit the wrong way so for me now like the Lord really showed me hey I want you to fast for relationship on a not not from because I've seen it done where it's like to get something like I want to get that promotion so let yeah. me fast yeah. or I want to get my breakthrough so let me fast like fasting does help with that but I fast because out of it's more a discipline out of just in a relationship with him and when I fast it's it's it just tenderizes me. Oh, interesting. You know, yeah. it tenderizes me and I feel I think it brings us to that place where we just feel his presence and we feel closer to him yeah. because you know we're getting weakened. <laughs> All our flesh is getting weakened in the fasting process. And so that's what I think is why the oh, fast no, that's, is, is I think not, that's spot on. not yeah. to not to get something or because yeah. I get it like people <laughs> fast to get their breakthrough, whatever. And and, yeah. and I totally understand that. I'm not judging, but I want to do it just to remain tender. You know? Yeah, you know, that's that's a proper attitude because, you know, it's more about positioning us to receive. And um, that's what the Lord taught me, too, as well. So it, it's right, right spot on with what I believe, because. Uh, Jesus was trying to explain to the disciples why the, the demon didn't come out. And he said, this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because he just like, and it went, you know, and with a word sometimes uh, that people would be healed or demons would leave. But he, he did explain it to me. He said that some demonic spirits uh, are so strong and entrenched mm -hmm. that if your spirit is not predominant, in your life, if your your spirit, your human spirit, is not uh, allowed to to dominate through your soul, through your flesh, that uh, that the demon will will take advantage of you and just uh, I've I've had them laugh at me, and I had this happen. I, I I just feel like I should share this. I didn't plan on it, but the, I was uh, I gave up going to the Air Force Academy, and about six months later, I was 
I was in Bible college. I'm like, you know, what am I doing here? You know, I mean, because I was going to be an aerospace engineer, and uh, I I opted out of all that and went to Bible college. And it was interesting because I was in a church, big church, 3,300 people in that church, and I was sitting there. It was a guest speaker Sunday night. I was sitting with my roommate, and all of a sudden, you know how in your peripheral vision, you think someone comes by you, you think, well, it's probably an usher or something, because there was somebody speaking at the time, you know. Well, I looked, and it's this, it's this, it's this uh, guy that's walking like a zombie, Whoa. and um, he walks up to the front while the guest speaker is speaking, and just proceeds to lay back and levitate in the middle of the air. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, okay, and so I'm waiting for this guest speaker you know, to go after it like David went after Goliath, you know. And then I looked at the ushers because she didn't do anything. And so I looked at the ushers and they didn't do anything. And this went on. I mean, you know, you know how like 30 seconds seems like 10 minutes, but yeah. it was way too long because David wouldn't have sat there that long. There'd been a, a stone between the guy's head, you know, the eyes, you know. So I I got up. I told my roommate, I said, I'm, <laughs> I'll take care of this, you know. And what, what it was is I... I had just given up fighter jets and and and, and, and being a designer for for you know future aircraft and aerospace designer and engineer and I I had just given that all up. I didn't give it up for a powerless religion. So I I went over. I just went right up there and I thought, well, if if you know if they're not going to do anything about it, you know, I, I, I guess I will. So I've been I've been saved six months and. I just started rebuking the devil just like I read in the Bible, and he fell. He lost his power to do that. And then the demons were really mad at me, so they started like prophesying against the United States in the name of Satan and against that church. And mm. I just told him to shut up because that's what Jesus told him to do, you know. And um, before you know it, he's all shut down, and I'm like, come out of him, come out of him. And then the, and the pastor comes up, and he stops me. He goes, he doesn't have demons. He's just hungry. Give him some food. And they gave him a bag of groceries from the food pantry, I kid you wow. not, and sent him on his way with the demons. And so when I got home, I, I was crying because I gave up, uh, I gave up all the, you know, this, this uh, amazing future, I thought, for a powerless religion, you know. I didn't know that there were like oh. different people that believe different ways, but <clears throat> yeah. this, they had claimed to be, so when I, when I went home, I was crying. And the Lord gave me the scripture verse where it says, this kind comes out by prayer and fasting. And I said, well, what does that mean? And he said, what it means, Kevin, is, is that you've only known me for six months. And the demon was taking advantage of that fact. And that he said, when you fast, it brings that connection. It's actually your flesh coming down. Mm -hmm. And so it's just exactly what he said. I, I, I didn't plan on sharing that, but I, I, I felt like I should because I learned that lesson right off the bat. Now, here's what I wanted to, to have you encountered this? Because you've been in foreign countries. Mm -hmm. um, I've encountered this kind of thing. It's it's a circus overseas because their uh, religion and their military and their government is all interwoven. And it's all it, religion is in everything. Right. Whereas in the United States, yep. um, it's really hard for demons to get entrenched in people because of the the fact that everyone has a little bit of a light in their in their life in some way. For the United States, it has that so. Uh, have you ever encountered uh, demon possessed people where you looked in the eyes and the demon knew that you knew that it that mm -hmm. it, it knew it was going right? Yes. Okay. Well, tell me. Tell me one of the stories. Well, I mean, I I just remember our times over in in India specifically. My husband and me went in some areas that were heavily entrenched with a lot of different religious things. There was right. there was uh, stations for idolatry worship and people would come and bring their sacrifices. So right there in there. public. Right there. It's everywhere. It's like it's <laughs> like Starbucks, but there. You know, it's <laughs> it's everywhere. And and <clears throat> there would be these priests that would sit there and, and they're like they they say they're, they're like fortune tellers, but they're heavily induced with witchcraft. It's not okay. just I mean fortune tellers is, but it's not like when we think America, we think of fortune telling. Exactly. This is yeah. this is like these witch doctors eat human flesh. Okay, so mm. like we're talking high level witchcraft, right? And wow. we would walk by, and and when I would walk by, the guy would start manifesting and be like, Ugh! he would make that Ugh! sound. They know that you know. Somebody, don't be afraid if I'm sharing, you know, I rebuke fear right now in Jesus' name. Listen, you have Christ I'll go within for it. you. It's good for him. Um, but anyway, <laughs> you know, and, and he would make that sound, and then I would look at it, look at him, look at it, look at him. But I would see his eyes just were red, 
and he would look at me and then look away like this. It was okay. always like this, like look down and away. It was the weirdest thing. And, and you know, every time we'd pass that area, same thing. Every single time, wow. he couldn't look me, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. he couldn't look me in the eye. And somehow he would go, or some kind of sound would He'd react, erupt. Yeah. And I've seen that many times. You probably oh, yeah. have as well with just the... Yeah, when I've the, seen on airplanes. When the, you, <laughs> the, yes. when the light of God is present, yeah. the demonic manifests. They just... Exactly. It just, they There's just two start, kingdoms clashing. Right, yeah. and they, they can't be hidden. It's like they just start... Coming out. I don't yeah. know how to explain no, it. No, it that, is hilarious, isn't it? They can't just keep quiet. Yeah, you see. You'd think they just keep quiet right. until you pass by, but no. Yeah, they, they just, <laughs> I'm sure no. as you were a you were a steward on oh yeah on the plane, you would oh, see it all the time. It took know? one time. It took um, it took eight police officers to get the, the demon possessed people off the airplane. It, there was 15 of them, oh. and they were all manifesting. And, and uh, what they wouldn't get off, of course. So when we landed. That took eight police officers and they were carrying them off over their heads. They were all screaming and struggling, and and I'm thinking, I wonder if those cops even know what they're what's really going on. But they they literally will never fly again ever. They'll I don't even think they'll be able to be on a bus because they were threatening the customers and uh, yeah. So th I've seen that, but um, I noticed this. I did an experiment. I want to ask you about this too. But I, I, I want you to comment on fasting, so I won't forget about that. But I want to go a step deeper with Anna because what I found was is that tied with fasting, when I would miss, I would miss two meals a day, and I did that for most of the 30 years I worked. And so when I was in college, I started that. The last three years, I had one meal a day, and then um, the 30 years I worked for Southwest, I, I rarely had more than two meals a day. It was usually just one. So I lived a fasted life. And um, what happened was, is that just that alone, when I would enter into an arena of any, any place, you know, even a store, like, um, you know, GNC, I walked into a mall in Sacramento and uh, praying in tongues, and I, you know, hadn't eaten yet. I was going to go eat, but I had to go get the vitamins first. I walked into this GNC, which I had done every week, because they have sales, you know, where they, they, they mark stuff down and I get my, my some vitamins for half off. You know, why pay full? You know, I have a little bit of Jewish blood in me. I don't pay, I don't pay retail for <laughs> anything. So this would happen every week. I would go in and see if there were any specials. But when I walked in there, I kid you not, I guess because I was praying in tongues around the store and I did that every week then when I came in from my trip, uh, before I go eat, I'd go check to see if the sale rack had anything on it. Every week, they put stuff on there, and um, I looked, and the employee that is sitting on the on the counter by the cash register in a yoga position and on like, the counter, yeah, doing wow. her yoga in protest of me, and she wouldn't acknowledge me even when I wanted to check out. I thought, dear Lord. <laughs> Wow. So I thought, what do I do, you know? And I thought, well, you know, if I just take it and start walking out, I'm sure she'll, you know. But um, that, that kind of stuff would happen all the time. And um, I noticed that, this, so this is what I did. I decided, because I was having people arrested all the time, and I was, uh, every day I had reports to fill out, uh, broken airplanes, uh, you know, broken people, people, you know, just, threatening me. So if you threaten me, I'm a, I'm a federal employee, so I, I, they, they, you go to jail. You stand before a federal judge if you even touch me. So you can't even grab a, a crew member. So they, you know, people were punching me and grabbing me and stuff like that. So I decided, you know what, I'm not going to pray in tongues at night. I would pray, pray in tongues for four hours a night. I won't pray in tongues. I'll back off. So I backed off, and the next day, nothing happened. Like, not, no reports, nobody mad at me. You know, I, it was hilarious. Not one thing happened bad. Wow. And I got to thinking about it. How many of you students, you, you think that because bad stuff happens to you that you've done something wrong? Well, what if <laughs> you've done everything right, you know? Exactly. And mm -hmm. so fasting does that, I noticed, and then praying in tongues does that. Mm -hmm. And when you back off of those things, then everything is fine. Right. Now, there's one more thing, and I'll hand it over to Tony because I, I, feel, like, I feel like he has something to say. But... There was one more thing. There was a guy that was on Sid Roth that that I, I knew, and I would pray with him all the time. And he he had uh, a, somehow gotten a, a bunch of demons into him. 
and uh, none of the pastors would cast the demons out because they didn't believe that because he was a Christian that he could have demons to begin with. So he couldn't find any pastor to help him with the demon. He was having all, he was actually manifesting demons. And um, like Lester Summerall said, you know, the question is not if a Christian can be possessed. The question is if, if there's a demon there, you need to cast them out. So it's more about getting rid of yes. the devil rather than talk about the doctrine of, yeah. you know, that. Okay, so that's my that's my theology is is that we drive out demons that's what our assignment is i don't care if it's in your cat you know it's going it's going you know so <laughs> okay so this guy this guy he had it took a year and you know who this is but because i don't have permission to mention his name i won't do that but he he is a good friend of mine and he it took a year and over a thousand demons came out of this guy that shouldn't have demons at all okay but when he got delivered, then um, I would ask him, so I was having all this stuff happen where people being arrested and, you know, all this stuff, and I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm fasting and I'm praying in tongues and I'm just working. Now, you know, I don't, I don't have a ministry, you know, a board or a pulpit or anything, but I, I, t I show up and things just start flying everywhere, you know, before you know people are being handcuffed and uh, all kinds of wild stuff. So I asked him to pray for me and he reluctantly did. He, I go, you know, I said, I just need, I just need the edge. So this was a third thing that I found that, that uh, led after fasting and after praying in tongues. The third thing was I had someone who had beat the living daylights out of the devil. He beat the living daylights out of these mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. to where he had established his domain. And then he laid hands on me and he just prayed reluctantly. And then got in his car, and drove off, like like I had you know almost ruined his schedule, you know, that kind of thing. Do you know that for three months, nothing bad happened to me? Not one demon spoke through a person. They were all yes sir, no sir. Everybody was treating me just like gold for three months, mm -hmm. and I thought you know there's something to this. So there's 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 these three things um, that maybe at you uh, I've asked this question about fasting. And I've given you three different um, areas that give you an edge in the spirit realm that the demon forces, they understand this. They, they understand if you know. So they look in my eyes. I've, I've, I've looked in their eyes and they've looked in my eyes and they know if you know. If mm -hmm. you know your authority and you know uh, that they can't mess with you, they will go. They will actually uh, show themselves out. They'll say, you don't even have to get up. You know, they'll say, oh, we'll, we'll get the door. Don't worry about it. You know, the demons are more than willing because they get beat up if, mm. you, if they have to deal with you. And so, Tony, I'm going to have you call me on whatever you do. But I found these three things. And I think it's interesting that fasting is just the beginning of, of this walk with God, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus said in uh, Matthew um, 5, 6, or 7, the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. He didn't say if you pray. He says when you pray to your Father <laughs> uh, in secret. Your father will reward you openly. Yeah. And so people need to know whenever they pray, they should expect the father's presence uh, to, and power to respond. Oh, so you're not surprised life. when your prayer gets answered. Right. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised if something doesn't, doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus said, not if you fast, but when you fast to your father in secret, he will reward you openly. Um, and... and uh, my sister here, she commented on, uh, you know, a lot of times people see prayer as a discipline or fasting as a discipline. But uh, Psalm 37 says, delight yourself in the Lord mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. he will give you the desires of your heart. And so what if um, fasting or prayer was just a method for me to uh, find my delight in Jesus? Mm -hmm. Wow. And that discipline is the result of delight. Mm hmm Oh, say that again. Yes. Discipline is a, go ahead. Is there is, discipline is the fruit of the root of delight. Wow. And so, to be a disciple. Yes. It's very simple. So, yeah, it is. Yeah. a true disciple delights in Jesus. Yeah. So, when you delight in Jesus, all the spirit world, yeah. both the holy angels and all others, they recognize this person delights in Jesus and we need to be concerned, yeah. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. and, and the reason I can say this is, is the Apostle Paul, his great delight was Jesus. And so when you had the seven sons of Sceva, <laughs> they said, hey, uh, Jesus we know and Paul we heard about. <laughs> 
So the demons know who you are, but the holy angels know who you are. Yeah. If you just simply delight in Jesus. That's where the presence mm. is, and that's where the power is. Wow. <laughs> that is good. I'm, I'm a, I feel increased every day now. Well, you, know, you know how you used to fast? I used to fast uh, 21 days in a row. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I was doing it because I wanted to get close to God. And then when I went to heaven, I found out I was close to God. <laughs> yeah. And that I was just supposed to come down here and act it out. And it was funny because during the 21 days, I would, I would just drink water. And um, it would take, uh, it would take uh, almost all of that to feel the power of God like I feel it right now and I just ate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, I just eat. Mm -hmm. I feel strong, more the power of God now than I did when it, after a 21 day fast. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, maybe, maybe people need to know that, you know, that it's, it's so the, the presence and the power that I feel now is based on my relationship with God, right. which is what all these things kind of caused. They were doorways to get yes. to him, right? Is that what you're all yeah. saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, and I, and I, I want to make this other comment is, um, you know, I mean, I learned how to fast a meal and two meals in the day and two days and then mm -hmm. three days. And then I did that same thing. Yeah. You know, the 21 day fast, the 40 day <laughs> fast. And then I got to a point where my confidence was in my fasting. Yeah, and you and know what happens when that happens. <laughs> yeah, it quit working. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so then I had to shift back to <laughs> my relationship with the Father and Jesus, and then it started working. So um, if I can say this, um, don't do what I did, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, <boy>. <laughs> As you can see, these are crazy friends. So we just, we actually... Uh, Drink together in the yeah. spirit. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I still believe in fasting, but yeah. it's just different. It's now. different. Yeah. yeah, it was for a different reason. To me, yeah. you know, yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, I I have a question for you, and the, the students want to know about the uh, you know essentially I'm going to help them out because yeah. they, they didn't define it this way, but really what they're asking about is is First Corinthians chapter two, mm -hmm. where Paul is essentially saying, listen. A spiritual person is not subject to a carnal man's judgment, to another man's judgment, because uh, there's the spirit of God has been given, but not everyone that is carnal accepts the spirit. So you right. can't judge rightly. So right. uh, essentially, that's what Paul was saying there. So they're asking, how can I um, discern or you know situations without judging? And it's kind of worded the right way because hmm. a spiritual person makes discernments about all things, but he himself is not subject to a carnal man's discernment or judgment because a person can't, like like a carnal person, you know, like like the news, the news can't judge a spiritual person, right. and they right. because they don't even accept the spirit of God. Right. Okay, so I want to ask you this: what What have you learned? Because I know you being a pastor and everything, and oh my gosh, you have you you watch you watch people like uh, like like when I was a flight instructor, I would let I would take the airplane up, we called it three mistakes high, so right. that if a student was going to kill you, he had, it would have three mistakes before right. he killed you, so right. you'd be up so high that right. you could recover the aircraft. Right. So I said, I'm going to take the, I, I tell the student, we're going up three mistakes high, so that <laughs> I can, if you try to kill us, I'll get you out of it three, at least three times. What You've watched people do that, and there's a certain point where you have to step in. Right. And it's not judging, right? It's, right. It's, so they, they're, they're asking you, how do, how do you uh, operate and discern, and yet you're not judging someone? Okay. It, Let's start with um, the carnal person cannot judge the spiritual person. Um, Jesus is in Matthew 16, and he says to his apostles, hey, what are the people saying about me? Well, some people think you, John the Baptist, raised from the dead. Some people think you, Elijah, Jeremiah, you, one of the prophets. They couldn't discern Jesus. So Jesus says, well, who do you say I am? <laughs> and then Peter gets a revelation. Ah, you're the Messiah. You're the son of the living God. And then Jesus mm -hmm. said something very interesting. He said, you're blessed, Simon Barjona. Um, because of this revelation, it's going to change who you are. Jesus is discerning. Oh, your name right now is Simon. Remember in, in John's gospel, when Jesus first meets him, he said, they call you Simon, but they're going to call you Cephas a rock. So discernment means that I can see where you are now. Mm -hmm. 
in the realm of your flesh or your carnal nature or in the realm of the earth. But discernment means I see who you really are from the eyes of the Father. Wow. And discernment, Jesus says, your name is Simon, which by the way in the Greek means unstable as water. And it means that uh, you could be as cold as ice <laughs> and deny Jesus. You can uh, become a vapor and start cussing because you got anger management issues. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or you can seek to your lowest level. And he says, now I see who you are, <clears throat> who you think you are, and, and, and who your daddy said you are. But, but, uh, but, uh. I see what you're going to become. Mm -hmm. And your name is Peter. You're going to be solid as a rock. It's interesting when Jesus gives that revelation, um, it, it begins the process, process of shifting Peter. <laughs> so in other words, um, from a pastoral, prophetic, apostolic point of view, I could look at somebody that someone else is saying, but there's something wrong with him. And I, my response is, no, there's nothing wrong with this person. They just have something missing. Oh, that's good. And what they're missing is the revelation of their truest self, their identity. Mm -hmm. Because when Peter, when Jesus said to Simon, you're Peter, that revelation brought him into identification with the Messiah, and he, he started the process of becoming Peter. And then he said, now I give you the keys of the kingdom. Wow. Now you have authority and dominion, mm -hmm. which means the true source of authority and dominion is to first recognize who Jesus is and then recognize who I am. Wow. As Jesus being my delight, me becoming a disciple, me being a son of the Father, and now the whole spirit world knows. Mm. And so when I speak the name of Jesus because I'm under the lordship of Jesus, all demonic beings have to bend their knee and admit, yes, Jesus Christ is the Lord of glory. Wow. Hey, did you feel, Anna, do you feel anything you want to add to that? No, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel the presence of God. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, that well, was so good. Well, uh, I know that, uh, I know that with you, because we've talked, and both of you, I, I know this, and so that a lot of the students, uh, they're, they're asking qu really good questions. One of them is about the narrow way. Mm -hmm. And um, you uh, totally understand because we've we've actually experienced uh, having to be squeezed into a very small space in order to pass through and pass our tests so that we can be promoted. So what could you say about being promoted and what's on the other side of that narrow way? Because I know you've been through it. And um, the thing of it was is you can't you can't actually function uh, in your fullness until you pass through that, right? I mean that's what I found. There's yeah. a it's the eye of the needle. It's, it's, it's literally the camel had to get on, his, on its knees uh, and go through the small area when the gates were closed at 6 o'clock in the evening. There was not any more commerce done in the, the city of Jerusalem. And so they had to unload all the, the stuff off the camel and bring it through. And all the stuff had to stay outside with somebody guarding it because there wasn't allowed to be any commerce. And I, I get that whole idea with the, the camel and all that. But... Mm -hmm. I just feel like uh, the students want to would, would want to hear what you've gone through. Can you can you tell me a little bit about like what what happened to you to get you to where you have all these these best selling books and you're on Sid Roth and uh, yet you're still a housewife and a, 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 you're a wife and a mother and you've been on the mission field and uh, the Lord has has given me uh, glimpses of your future. He's shown me that. Uh, there's some, going to be some quick things that happen very quickly with you very soon. Like, like, I literally saw you go home, open your refrigerator. When you opened your refrigerator, something happened. Mm -hmm. I saw it that quick. Mm -hmm. So you're on your way into what God has for you. But what did that cost you? Yeah. I, yeah. Every time there's been steps in my life of, of promotion, I've seen there's been firing, like a moment of firing before because I know the Lord... It's like he would say, can I trust you and trust you, Anna, with this? And so it was like test upon test mm. that I would walk through with the Lord where he would, you know, strip me down and, and show me areas of my own life that he says, okay, this part of your character we need to work on. And, and this part, Anna, you know, 
you still, you know, you're still impatient and sometimes and you need to work on that, Anna. And, and you need to be, you know, give more grace and you need to, and he just started, kept working and working my character so that the next thing that he would open a door for me, you know, I would, I would be ready for that door. Because we want to push the door sometimes, oh, but yeah. if we push it, then we'll get so burnt, you know. Mm -hmm. And so in love, he would, he would work on my character over and over and over. And so, like I said this earlier with you, but it, it's like death to self, like over and over and over, because then he knew that he could trust me, like with what he, yeah. would, what he would give me. And so to become an with the whole thing of an author, you know, with my se the seer's path. For years I was seeing in the secret and I wouldn't share with anybody what I was seeing and I, because I, hmm. I didn't really have the understanding of it and I didn't have the language for it. Okay. So if I had run then, I would have hurt more people yeah. and it would have burnt me, really. Hmm. And so there was years that I went through in saying, God, what is this? Explain this to me. I became a student and just, you know, and I'm always learning. I'm always a student, you know, but, yeah. but, and then I got married and my husband, he's not, he's not a seer. And he's, you know, I'd say there's an angel, you know, in the back seat of our car. And he said, what? When he, the day he proposed, y'all, the day he proposed, <laughs> I'm looking, there's this giant angel that's like 40 feet. It was the biggest angel that I'd ever seen. And he comes to me, and I'm, I'm on the beach, and <laughs> my husband's behind me. Now, I didn't know he was setting up the camera. He's a techie guy, so he had the camera go off at the right time to capture that moment. But I'm looking at the angel. The angel comes to me with this big key. And I'm like, Sam, Sam, it's the biggest <laughs> angel I've ever seen. Sam, Sam look at and there's keys falling from heaven. I mean, everywhere. I'm like, there's so many keys. And he said, okay, that's great. Would you just turn around and look at me? He was down on one knee proposing. Oh. And he, that's how he, that was our proposal. Wow. And in that, so then we're married. And, mm -hmm. and we get married. And I'm learning how to explain, hey, I went to heaven last night. And this is what I saw. And this is what it means. And he's like, what? <laughs> you know, if you were to unpack, because see, that's what I see a lot of, uh, a lot of times we get these prophetic words, but we have to have language to break it down so that everybody can understand it. So we can go into the marketplace. I can talk to an actor or an actress about real deep stuff, heavenly stuff, but have language. Yeah. So that it's not like spiritually weird or, you know, what is she talking about? But it, it's, <laughs> We want to be, because we have to bring that into every, God wants to just leak out into every different place in, in the store, in the, you know, just to encourage everyone in the library, wherever you are. So we have to get that language. But it was like, it was just dying to myself over and over. So I spent years wow. before he said, now you can be released. And there was times where I wanted to, Kevin. There's times I remember I would see my friends run ahead mm -hmm. in, in their ministry. And I was like, can I be released now, God? Because I knew, see, the thing is, I knew what was coming. The Lord had shown me. And I said, now, and, and he said, not now. Not now. And then I had to just sit with it. And I'll tell you, there's times where I was frustrated in the waiting, you know, because oh, he's yeah. still waking, working on that impatient side of my personality. I'm like, come on, God, you know. And then, he, he, and then he said, okay, now, now write your book. And and then I wrote it. And even in that process, I waited. God told me the publisher that would publish it. Right. And they rejected it. Right. The first time, and um, all these other people came to me. And I said, no, because I didn't have the peace of the Lord on it. Yeah. And I, I waited. I waited. And I just kept saying no. And then they approached me when, when it was the right timing. Well, so that was the kind of the narrow way for you then. Yes. And then the Lord, wow. even, waiting to, on even getting that book published, yeah. <laughs> the Lord said, Anna, start walking. And I thought, what? I had just had a baby. Oh. I was, I had a newborn. I'm mm -hmm. not in shape. And God said, walk, Anna. 
And so I started training. And I'm like, okay, so every other day I'd go and walk with the baby. I'm walking the baby, breastfeeding the baby and walking. And, I'm, and then the Lord said, do this walk-a-thon. And I thought, what? And God said, so you're going to walk 23 miles. 23 and I'm miles. like, 23 miles, God, that's like a lot. Yeah, so <laughs> I thought, okay. I walked, 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 walked. The day of the walkathon comes. I go to walk 23 miles. Long story short, I got lost. I ended up walking 33 miles, which that number is interesting, <laughs> y'all, right? It was my 33rd year that my book got released, and it was 33 miles I walked. Along that journey as I was walking, so talk about the narrow way, right? Mm -hmm. I walked in, towards the end, I walked in pain. I remember my knee hurt. I was in pain, you know. I finally get to the end. As I get to that end, the Lord said, you just birthed something in the Spirit. Oh, wow. You just birthed your ministry. And I went, oh, my goodness. And then within two days, the publisher called me and said, we found your manuscript. We want to offer you a contract. But see, that was the journey. Wow. All along was the process of waiting and trusting God and saying, okay, I'm not going to run ahead of your time. I want to stay in your timing. Yeah. And then there was sacrifice of the, you know, anyways, that's a fun, wow. it's a wild story. But just to, about the narrow way, it's worth it. It's worth it if you would be faithful with the things, the promises God has spoken over your life. You know, just hold them before the Lord and mm. wait for Him, and it, it'll, it'll be worth it. And you don't even think about the sacrifice. When, you know, during it, you think, oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> you know, man. I know. But, but it's worth it. It really is. Wow. You know? <laughs> so so you, you actually had to pass a lot of tests, and the tests were for you, because because of, of your background, your personality, and you know edu your education, you you're a go getter. So you mm -hmm. you so go, the, what had to be burned out of you was you had to relinquish your ability to deliver yourself. Essentially, yeah, that's what I was too. In yep. fact, uh, you know you you could probably uh, you could probably right now decide I'm going to do this, and within a couple of years you'd be. You know, you'd be doing that. Just even with the education, you could do that, but it's 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 learning. I'm getting it because that's that's the way it is with me. But I when I decide to do something, uh, you know, like my flight training was a three year school. I did it in nine months, and I was already flying commercially when everyone else would still be in school for two more years. Yeah. So, but then, but that was because the Lord told me I could do it. But I, when I gave it up, I had to walk away from it, and it was dead, and I didn't care if it ever came back. But now it's revived. And, and it's the same way with, um, it's the same thing with you too, Tony, because you, your narrow way was you were, I would call you a professional pastor, a professional, you know, clergyman, whatever. But then there was, there's just one small thing missing. It was a supernatural. It was supernatural. <laughs> oh, well, you know. <laughs> Oh, just a minor oversight, I guess. Yeah. Well, well yeah. but you thought, well, you know, wait a minute. If I'm, my life's going to be rerouted and I'm going to, you know, I'm a, I want it all or I want nothing, right? You know, so can you, you want to comment a little bit on the narrow way? Because I just yeah. feel, I feel like the Spirit's saying something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what happened is coming close to the late 90s, Jesus appears to me and he says, um, you're getting ready to go through something. Oh, nice. I let him know. Um, I'm not interested. <laughs> and I want to let I want so to make you aware. Out? I want to make you aware that I let him know in very strong terms, no. <laughs> You're opting out. <laughs> so 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 let me tell you what he does. He comes to my ear. He comes to, he's face to face. He comes to this ear and he lets me know it's still gonna happen. And he stands back and he's gone. This is when I discovered that God was the Godfather. Mm -hmm. And he had put a contract out on my carnality, and the Holy Ghost was the hitman. <laughs> Come on. Oh, man. <laughs> and you can run, but you can't hide from a Holy Ghost hitman. And so, you know, this is when stuff starts happening. Stuff. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't pretty. Stuff. It wasn't. <laughs> listen, listen, I would love to be able to tell people that I, I lifted up my hands as I went through my trial and said, oh, to Jesus, I surrender. 
No, I went through squealing like a pig every, every <laughs> second of the way. <laughs> I was not going to go gently into my crucifixion. Wow. And so, uh, so, so what happens is, is I go through it, and uh, eventually uh, I, I, I go through a death, and then I come into a resurrection. And so now what I teach people is this. <laughs> There's a pattern with God. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I would say this to the students. Don't be concerned about what God has told you. Be concerned about what he ain't told you. <laughs> 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 be concerned about what he ain't told you. <laughs> so this is when I discovered there's this pattern. And the pattern is he gives you a treasure. He, first of all, he's the treasure and his word is the treasure. Yeah. Um, Second Corinthians 4 and 7 says we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power, excellency of the power will be of God, not of us. But the Greek word for for, for treasure is the word thesaurus, which is a series of words. But right after the treasure comes a trial. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Yeah. Not popular. Yeah. That's where you're pressed <laughs> into the narrow way. Yes. Mm -hmm. And see, uh, the Lord knew that I was not going to go willingly. So I got recruited. <laughs> I ain't going. Oh, you going? <laughs> you ain't gonna go. You gonna be in this situation. Ain't nothing you gonna be able to do <laughs> except for just say, "Jesus, help me." <laughs> so I found out yeah. when I came out on the other side, I had great joy, and my life also shifted. This is when I discovered: you have the treasure, you have the trial, and if you can think the word, speak the word, and do the word, Joshua one and eight. Through the trial, you come out with a greater treasure. Mm -hmm. And so what a lot of people are thinking is, I'm in this trial. And just like you said, when you're in the trial, it lasts a whole lot longer. Mm -hmm. And I can so appreciate what you said, because um, uh, I got issues. <laughs> so the woman with the issue of blood was not the only one who had <laughs> issues. No, right? no. You, men can have issues, too. Oh, uh, right? yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I want patience, and I want it now. Yeah. Right. And, uh, <laughs> exactly. If I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. So I'm, I'm reading. I'm reading about this man of God, great man of God, he ministered in the hundred nations. Wow. And he, he he's on, he's fasting and he's talking to himself because ain't nothing happening while he's on this fast. He's two days into it at a hotel or motel, and so he starts talking to himself like you know we do. And this is what he says. He says, um, "Sure takes God a long time to speak." And then a voice comes up and says. To hurry God is to find fault with him. Oh, wow. And then he repents. Now, when I'm reading this, these words leap out at me. Like, okay, I have been nailed by the Godfather. Because, you know, I'm a habitual hurry God. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I have to repent. And then I do real good for a while. <laughs> and then I backslide. <laughs> so, so, and I got to repent again. <laughs> So what happens is, is when he repents, Jesus appears, talks to him four hours from knowing, about knowing God, ends up going a hundred nations, teaching on how to know God in his manifest presence. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to say to you is this. Maybe you feel like you're under pressure and you're under squeeze, but the Lord is taking out of you uh, what doesn't need to be there. And he's going to put in there, put inside of you what he wants there. And once you get through this process, you know, this treasure, this trial, you're going to end up with a greater treasure of Jesus to share. He's in the process of making you. Mm -hmm. And uh, squeal like a pig like your friend here, <laughs> but go through it <laughs> and see what the end is going to be. It's going to be a place of great joy. <laughs> okay. Well, you asked. I know. But since you seem to be the bartender here, you seem to be the bartender. I'm going to ask you this question here. Um, what this student is asking: Why does sometimes prayer seem to 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 take so long to be answered? Oh. Which is is just an add-on to what you've just done, but but I this is the question I was going to ask you next yeah. anyway. So yeah, well, just so keep going, going. No, I can serve I us can, some more here. I can, I can answer. <laughs> yeah, uh, Hebrews six and twelve says, uh, "Do not be lazy." Basically, means do not kick it into neutral, but um, be a follower of those who, through faith 
and patience inherit the promises. So sometimes the Father could answer your prayer instantly or immediately, but he doesn't do it because he wants to develop you in the process. Uh, Jesus said this. He says, I have many things to say to you, but you can't bear it now. But in the Greek, it means this. For where you are in your level of immaturity, you can't stand up under the weight of the revelation I want to mm -hmm. release to you. Wow. And so what happens when you're waiting upon the Lord or waiting for the Lord, waiting upon the Lord would be Isaiah 40. They that wait in the Hebrew means exchange their weakness for his strength. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So you can hold up under the revelation and um, uh, Lamentations uh, 325 says the Lord is good to those who wait for him. And so in the waiting, you're developing a spiritual strength so that when the revelation comes on you, you can stand up under the weight of it. Listen, God. Um, OK, let me say it to you like this. You consider it a negative trial. OK, God considers it a process of maturity so that you can develop a stress so he can lay this weighty, heavy revelation on you. But you've developed now that you can carry it. And once you can carry it, now it's a part of you and you can release it. And when you release this revelation, you're releasing heaven into other people's lives. Praise God. That's good. Praise the Lord. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Anna, I, I want to ask uh, if you could comment on this one. This one is is actually something I address all the time. It's it's constantly asked. In fact, every single probably service I do, and I do two or three a day. Uh, now I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, me too. I address it all the time. So, and I know I know that you're supposed to to address this. How do I deal with the constant frustration of living in the spirit and in this world at the same time? And I think. I think that be, you being a mother and yeah. yet going around the world and prophesying well, yeah. uh, and casting out devils and healing the sick, I, I, go ahead and, and yeah. tell, tell us tell I, us something the Lord's taught you about all this because you have you have two small children. Yeah. Yeah, and so you're a mother well, and, mom, and they're young too. They're six and four. Yeah, and, and then you're and you're puppy. here. You're away from them, <laughs> and uh, yeah. so it's you know it's and I remember when. We went to Israel together, mm -hmm. and I remember it just, I was just like, this is like heaven. Oh, I was wow. like, this just feels like heaven. I was. For those who haven't been to Israel, you need to go. But it felt, yeah. it just felt like heaven. And I remember I was on the plane ride coming home. You were probably writing, you know, your 20th book or something. But I <laughs> was crying. Yeah. I was crying because I felt just the sadness of leaving something that felt that much like heaven. And I was, and it wasn't like, oh, I'm crying because I'm going home. Don't take that wrong to my no, kids. No, no, because you were. But you I were, just, I, when I was yeah. in Israel, I was in the throne room most of the time. I, I had that say, throne room and then that, encounter. Yeah. And then I was under the fire of God, oh, yeah. you know, over and over for days. Yeah, really. I, I still haven't out. gotten over it. Yeah. It's been almost a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, and I came home and I remember I was like, how do I, how do I be? And that's often the feeling when you have heaven experiences and then it's like, how do I be in this earth? How do I be here where it's not like it is in heaven? Yeah. But I've had the, uh, the download or the little deposit and then how do I now, what do I do with that, you know? And it took me a while to adjust. It, I really okay. went through like two weeks where I was like, how do, how do I function? How do I be and the Lord said to me he said it was it was just the best tip he could have given me he said Anna come walk with me and it would be daily we would go on walks together okay and Jesus would show up and I would hold his hand okay and he said you need to hold my hand now and continue to walk with me like we walked there oh wow and I remember in Israel it just felt like heaven, and I would have these yeah. encounters with God, right? Where it, was was, it was easy and fast. It's yeah. just easy and fast, and he said, you know, mm -hmm. I'm still just as present there, here, mm -hmm. but you have to learn it. It's just a little different in how, you know? And so mm -hmm. it, it 
took me having, I had to be, a, as a mom, I'm super busy with my kids, but I'm very intentional <laughs> with my time that I really make time to. for the Lord so that I can walk with Him hand in hand mm -hmm. like that. And yeah, it's sometimes it's interesting when you go in and out of heaven experiences and then oh, yeah. come back here and you say, how do I be? Well, all I know to do is lean on Him. Okay. You know, and he shows me how to be, how to function, how to go in and out of vision and then now function fully as mom. And it doesn't mean that it's separate. I can be fully a prophetess, seer, whatever title you want to give me, but it, with my children, it's just worship, really. Our job is worship. <laughs> no, it's no title. Just drop the title. Yeah. Set you free from titles. Just, just, yeah. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> you're a son, you're a daughter, and you just get to worship. Wow. You know, you worship in heaven, you worship in, on earth, you worship as you do the dishes, you worship as you change the diaper, as you take that puppy out. <laughs> That puppy. Oh, no, no, not the puppy, please. <laughs> not the puppy. <laughs> but I don't want you having relapses. No, no, I know my puppy's <laughs> just driving me nuts right now. But, but it's all, it's all worship, you Praise know. God. Yeah. I'm, I'm hearing, I'm hearing you, and I think, I think that the, the main point, the main point that you're saying, that, and that I always tell people is that your relationship with God doesn't change because your environment changes. Right. And that's the problem, is that people start judging their relationship with God based on the change that's happening around them. But see, the, what's happening inside of you is eternal. And God is always, uh, God, uh, J Jesus said, you know, you don't cease to be God's son just because uh, you don't hear from him or you don't uh, feel anything or mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, it's, a, it's something that is, that I, I like he said, uh, you don't cease to be your father's son just because he uh, doesn't call you for a week. You're still, you know, I don't lose the, I don't lose that. I can, I can, I have that relationship, and um, it, it's very interesting to me because uh, here, here, in order to stay in what I would call a relationship encounter, because I, I've learned that my relationship causes encounters to happen all the time. So I've had several today. I've learned to just walk in the encounter because it's part of the relationship. But I learned, I learned something about environments and that all, not all environments are conducive for right. those kind of things automatically. Right. What I mean is, is that there are people that are very, very strong uh, ministers who have come here to visit me and stayed in my house. But when they got here, they ran from their car to my doorstep because of the oppression. So they got, they got, they drove through the city of, uh, mm -hmm. of New Orleans and then got to my house and uh, they ran in to get in my house because, mm -hmm. and then they didn't want to leave the house because there were, you know, we, we had, we had uh, secured our domain. That's a place of peace. Yeah. And so that's what happens. And then uh, at night mm -hmm. I tell them, you know, angels are here, so you might get woken up and if you have to pray, you have to do what they want you to do. And. So I was telling them that, and you know, you know how people are. They're like, well, okay, you know, whatever, you know. But then they go down and get water, and there's an angel standing there beside the water machine, and mm -hmm. they're like, oh, wow. Okay, so we've had people stay in our house, and uh, I, I, you know, I said, hey, listen, we get up at 3 a.m. to pray every morning. If you want to join us, you know, you're going to stay here for a couple months. You know, I would suggest you come down and, and get with it, with us, and learn. It's going to... It's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, help you the rest of your life. Okay. What I found was is that sh this person couldn't shift. They couldn't shift from their natural life into the spiritual life because they had become so accustomed to the natural life. But uh, like with us, uh, we create an environment and then it becomes common. Then we can't shift into the carnal mm -hmm. side of it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what happened was is at the end of this, uh, you know, I notify them. It's it's time. It's time. I, I feel like the Lord's moving moving you into your career and everything. So um, I invited the person that never come down ever in three months ever come down to pray with us, which was the whole purpose of why they were there. Because we don't do that. We don't we don't ever open our house like that. Mm -hmm. And I get invitations all the time from all different countries to come live with me. And I'm like, well, maybe you should check with my wife first. You know, <laughs> you know. So, but I have that happen a lot. Okay, so this is what happened. Uh, 
they promise we will, I will be down. I said, well, uh, you know, just so you know, we, we get up at three, we'll be, we'll ending it at six or seven, you know, and, uh, they never show up except what happened was, is they showed up about five thirty or six, but this is what happened that last day. They woke up, rolled over, fell back to sleep because they set their alarm. They woke up to a large angel with a very long trumpet that was right in the yep. person's face. Yep. The, the angel blew the trumpet <laughs> and said, it's time to pray. <laughs> Come on. I don't need an alarm. <laughs> and that was, their, that, that was their last day there. Wow. And... Um, but I want to tell you, when I was in Israel, like so, the fight, the fight was yeah. uh, that that uh, he, it, to, in order to have that kind of relationship encounter mm -hmm. and manage between the two realms, I pretty much had to just opt out of the carnal. And you know what? I went to work for for thirty years. Uh, if I was late thirty seconds, I got fined twelve hundred dollars, which was more than I got paid the, for that week. So if I showed up late for my work on my first day of a trip, I lost $1,200. Mm. Okay, so I wasn't late that much, okay? So I was in the spirit, but I also, you know, had to, you know, in order to get paid, I had to show up on time. So I, what's interesting was, is when we were in Israel, I kid you not, I think we were there uh, 14 days or 13 nights or something like that in 14 days. Mm -hmm. Okay, out of that. Me and my wife had an angel visitation 12 of those nights to where we couldn't sleep. Wow. It was so strong. Yeah. The whole, the whole city was saturated, mm -hmm. right? And it, and it was easy to walk in this, and I would go different places, and I would smell the linen of Jesus' garment, which because I had smelled that when I was in heaven. And then there were certain places where they were saying, oh, this is where this happened, and the Lord said, no, this it no, didn't happen. Right. No, it wasn't yeah, the right place. No, it wasn't the right uh, place. So yeah. I... I uh, I realized that part of living in both realms has to do with the spiritual environment too. And that we should, you know, you as students, remember that it's not your fault sometimes. You're in a war mm -hmm. and this is a fallen world. And, you know, the thing of it is, is I, I, I tell people if you're, you don't wait to refer, rehearse your healing scriptures when you're in an ambulance going to the hospital. You preventively sow into healing mm -hmm. and Perhaps this thing would never even happen. That's what I saw in heaven. Okay, because of that, uh, it's the same way with, with uh, your walk with God as a general statement. You sow into your spirit life, and what does Paul say? Then you will reap the spirit, mm -hmm. right? Okay, um, I know that we're uh, getting close to the time, and, but I, I, I do want to go a little further. Just one more question. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm saying this because there, there is a point where when you, you, you pray, you pray, and there's a war that happens, right? Okay, there's a war right away that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, real quickly, as we close this, tell the students about the fact that when you pray, that something happens, uh, a transaction happens. Can you explain that? And then that it necessarily doesn't happen uh, right away, right? Uh, like when you pray, you have to believe that you receive before you, you you get the answer right, yeah. what is it that you do? Uh, it just in a it just in a short answer, uh, what would you, what would you say uh, is something you could tell the students about the the delay? Yeah, because yeah. I know you've had that happen because <laughs> you've been to heaven, but yet at the same time you you mm -hmm. you are still uh, waiting for God to answer some of your prayers, right? And you've been to heaven, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've and how do you deal with that? There are things that God has shown me will come. And he says, this is a promise you have, Anna, over your life. And I'm still believing for it. Yeah. And I'm praying. Now it's now I'm stepping into my part of, now I pray and I believe and I've got to link my faith with it that this is coming. And the delay, there's sometimes there's delay because we think, well, it's the enemy delaying it. But sometimes in love, the Father, I think, does delay things because you're not ready for it. And wow. he's, or he's setting things in perfect alignment. Okay, that's good. So that when the promise is released, the bridge has been built. 
Oh, that's good. So you're not, you know, the promise isn't released and you're out drowning. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so I, I just take everything to prayer and I am still believing. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We're not alone in our walk with God. Yeah. And so the things, now I don't throw out my prayer requests to everybody. Yeah, I right? don't either. Obviously, yeah. you, but you have, you start developing your inner, 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 inner little tiny circle that, you know, you might have like three of your closest friends that you say, let's link arms, will you yeah. pray with me with this? And the power in prayer, you know, when I saw in heaven, I saw those parcels all on the wall, that room that there's all these parcels on the wall and there's angels standing by and they were delivering them. Wow. And some of them weren't moving. And I said, why aren't they moving? Why aren't they moving? And he said, they're waiting for the saints to release the prayers. Those are the answers. And I went, oh, that scripture knocking you shall receive. Like the power of our prayers, yeah. you know, is so much stronger than we realize. When we intercede, every time we pray, we're actually calling down something. That's good. But we don't know that, you know, God's timing, but you have to know that you are literally, I think of those parcels every time when I go to pray, wow. that I'm praying from that place of authority. I'm calling it down, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Praise God. That's good. Yeah. Tony, do you want to add something? Because I, I know you, you're a man of prayer, of course, but you're more of a yanking it in, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I am. Um... I, I'm really big on um, praying in the Holy Spirit. Uh, I probably pray in the Holy Spirit more than I pray in English. Yeah. Um, because I'm going to be praying the will of the Father, so it's going to be a perfect prayer. Well, that's good. It's a sure thing. And so, That's exactly right. It's a sure thing. And so um, um, sometimes uh, I will focus on for lack of a better term, the inner presence of the Lord, to have a place of contentment until I see what I'm praying for manifest. And so um, Paul said, you know, I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think there's a lot of people who struggle with contentment. And the Bible says, be content. And so I don't know if people understand the spiritual power of just being content in Jesus. Wow. Yeah. That that contentment is what's in heaven. Yeah, it is. And if you can access the contentment that's in heaven and let that permeate your spirit, it releases angels because angels love to be around an atmosphere on earth that's similar to or exactly like what's in heaven. And so it releases angelic activity. Mm -hmm. Now you have to trust the Father. I mean, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. And you have to trust the Father's timing. Mm -hmm. Because the moment he chooses will be greater than anything you've thought. <laughs> wow. And so it's a matter of trusting the Father. And I want to say this because this is important because I'm seeing it. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to trust the Lord. It's another thing to trust his ways. And that's, that's something really, really important. So now, why do I want to pray in the Spirit? So I can get a revelation of His ways. Okay? Moses knew God's ways. The sons of Israel knew His acts. So I want to pray in the Spirit until I get a revelation of how, when, where, who, all of that. And when all of those things line up and come together, then we're going to see God manifest himself. Mm -hmm. oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Hey, well, listen, I'm going to ask you all to join me in the global prayer meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. And so just in a couple of hours, we're going to meet together in the upper room. Mm -hmm. And here's what's going to happen. We're going to pick up mm -hmm. with this discussion. Uh, we're going to teach a little bit on prophetic prayer and yeah. discuss that. And I'm going to give, the, give you the mic. And for all of you out there, uh, all you students, thank you for joining us. And I, I, I believe that this has helped you. But I'm going to ask you to pass it around. You know, we have a global prayer meeting every month, and it'll actually literally be every week eventually. But 
we have it between 2,500 and 3,000 people log on all over the world and pray with us, mm -hmm. and I believe that it's going to go to 250,000 within this year. We're going to have 250,000 people logged on praying with us together. But tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 7 o'clock Central Time, uh, we're going to uh, have my crazy friends and I up there with a whole bunch of other crazy friends, and we're going to pray for your healing. We're literally going to minister to you healing from the upper room at Warrior Notes uh, School of Ministry. We're going to pray for your healing. You're going to be able to log on, send your prayer requests in, and we're going to pray for you. And we're going to do that for a couple, like two hours, if, if, if the Lord willing. But um, I'm, I'm going to have my crazy friends talk to you about prophetic prayer, how you can yield to the Spirit and start to prophesy to your world, prophesy to your body, tell your body that it has to get in line with God's will, tell your family to get with it, and um, I say, I, Lord, I, I got saved, and now my whole family is going to be saved. Uh, we, we, we've seen so many uh, people healed. In fact, we prayed for people last month on this, and before we even ended the prayer meeting, we were getting praise reports in of people being healed already. Now, here's the funny thing about it. After it was live, within the next couple of days, people watched it. So it wasn't live anymore. And people were being healed yeah. Yeah. because your faith, your faith touches the eternal one and he has compassion on you. And there is no time limits with God. So I encourage you to join us again in just a few hours at eight o'clock Eastern time. We're gonna teach you a little bit. We're gonna do like a handoff and you know, like a tag team preaching I'm, and we're going to we're going to then we're going to call out the healings we're going to let take your requests but i know that that, that both both uh pastor tony here and and, and uh anna as well that you operate in the spirit and in the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom so uh they're they're going to be used mightily of god in, in in the prophetic tonight so join us again hey thanks for joining us and i thank god for you and just just so you know the lord told me, he said, go into all the nations and make disciples. And so that's what we're doing here at Warrior Notes School of Ministry. God bless you, and we'll see you tonight at 8 p.m. Thanks.